All right, the book of John this morning, chapter number 5, if you would. John chapter number 5. And we're going to rediscover in a little different way uh, who Jesus is here this morning and uh, some things about Him and some evidence concerning who He is as we go through the message today. And we're glad that you're out and about on this cold, rainy morning. But it is February, right? It's supposed to be cold. Uh, and uh, we're thankful for it. The air just seems refreshed out there, though, this morning, if you paid attention to that. It just seems to be refreshed uh, out uh, this morning. So, again, we are thankful for that. Now, uh, tonight at 5 o'clock as well, many of you signed up to bring desserts. Don't forget that, because that uh, uh, is something everybody's looking forward to. And uh, I, I like to get just a little sampler plate, you know, as you kind of go through there, you get a little bit of dab of this and dab of that and dab of the other. That's always uh, good to do. So don't forget the desserts uh, uh, tonight. All right, John chapter 5. This is a very familiar story, at least to many, about the man by the pool of Bethesda. He had been laying there for 38 years. Do we have anybody that's 38 years old right on here this morning? 38. We have a bunch of liars in here, uh, I can see. A bunch of people who I know is older than 38. Julie, you're right at 30, you're 38, okay. Uh, imagine from the time you were born to now just being laid up, not being able to walk and not being able to move. I, you can't imagine that. Uh, um, I've been married 38 years, so... Uh, uh, and there's been times when I didn't treat Dana right that I couldn't walk uh, for a little while, but uh, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about there. But uh, anyhow, uh, I, it hadn't been the whole 38 years, praise the Lord, uh, uh, for that. But anyhow, the, the man has been laying by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, and he is going, his life is getting ready to be different. I mean, it is getting ready to change dramatically. You know who he's getting ready to meet? The Lord Jesus Christ is who he's getting ready to meet. And uh, Jesus is heading to Jerusalem because it says in verse number 1 of John chapter 5, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. We've heard of Bethesda, right? And it's having, it has five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews, or the Pharisees, we could say, therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. All right, that's just part of the story that we're going to look at today, and we'll look at some other verses here in just a few moments. But who is the Lord Jesus Christ today, and what? Uh, uh, how about the claims that he makes that he is the Son of God? Are they true? Is he the Son of God? If you ever, have a, if you ever talk to a member of a cult like a Mormon or Jehovah's Witness or other cults, you will, you will discover, of course, if, if you ever spend any time talking to them, that they deny three things. First of all, they deny the deity of Christ. They do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They deny that the Bible is God's Word, or they will add something to it, and thereby denying God's Word. They will also tell you that you have to work your way to heaven. Uh, you cannot get to heaven just through Jesus Christ. You have to work your way to heaven. 
And if you see that, if you see those folks, uh, you see especially Jehovah's Witnesses, you'll see Mormon missionaries from time to time, but you'll see Jehovah's Witnesses every Saturday, maybe in your neighborhood or around the neighborhood that you go through, and you will see them because they're trying to, in essence, work their way to heaven. And it's very sad because we know that Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus also claimed to be the Son of God. He is not a Son of God. He is the Son of God. He is deity. He is God in the flesh. And He makes those claims. And here, from this story and from this chapter, we will be able to investigate some of His claims again or relook at some of His claims. And at the end of the uh, message today, you will be the jury and you will make the decision on whether He is truly the Son of God or not. You get to make your own decision. You get to vote, yes or no. Now, sad thing about it, you vote no here this morning, you're headed to an eternal hell unless you change your mind. You vote yes this morning, then you can come to know Him personally and come to know Him as Savior. Is He or is He not the Son of God? Well, we, of course, preach here and know here that He is truly the Son of God. He was not created there in Bethlehem. He was before Bethlehem. And He has always been... He always will be. We, don't, we can't comprehend that, but that's the way it is with our God. Now, in this particular story, Jesus comes to Jerusalem and He walks into the uh, pool of Bethesda there and He sees a man and there was plenty of other folks, but He goes to this one man and He says, Wilt thou be made whole? Now, if you have some kind of disease or some kind of uh, 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 physical problem this morning and uh, uh, Jesus would come to you and say, Wilt thou be made whole? What would you say? I think you would say yes, right? Well, this man kind of hem hauls around a little bit. See, this pool of Bethesda here, they had some kind of subterranean spring that would, uh, you know, move ever so often. It's kind of like, uh, what's that, uh, uh, Willard? That big gusher out there in Yellowstone? Old Faithful, there you go. I have to ask Willard because uh, he, he helps me out with some stuff from time to time. Uh, uh, old faithful, you know, that just gushes, uh, just ever so often it does that, and, and gushes up. Well, this, this is kind of like this, what this uh, pool did here, and it, it, would, it would stir the water. Now, they, they say it was an angel stirring the water. And this man looked at Jesus, and, and he said, well, I just don't have anybody to help me. Now, he didn't know who Jesus was at this time. And even when he got finished, he really didn't know who Jesus was for a while. And uh, he, he, he doesn't even uh, imagine that Jesus could heal him. And then after he tells Jesus, well, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool, Jesus says, rise up, take up thy bed, and walk. Man, don't you just wish you could have been there to see that? Now, when we get to heaven one day, we can get the video of it, I guess. But I'm telling you, it, it, it's just got to be amazing. Because this man who was impotent in his legs, he had no strength whatsoever in his legs uh, to, to pull him up and to move around. All of a sudden, he could just feel strength just go back into his legs. And, and, he, and, he, and he was able to rise up, and he was able to take up his mat, and he was able to walk away from that. Now, it's a miracle that he could get up and walk, but it's a miracle that he could even walk. How many of you have ever laid around the house for a week? You know, you've been sick or you've been hurt or whatever, and you just lay around the house for a week. Let me tell you something, it's tough to even get up and get moving again. Uh, can you imagine laying somewhere basically for 38 years? But that, that's even a greater miracle than what we could ever imagine because the man was able to get up and he was able to walk around. He picked up his mat and, and walked. And let me tell you something. Jesus, uh, uh, that's, this is of course the, the, uh, really the, the uh, major healing in, in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got a whole story about it here. And, and Jesus did for this man, listen, Jesus did for this man what this man could never imagine. And He can do the same thing for you. He's done that for me in my life, I'm telling you. He has done more for me than I could ever even imagine. And He has done, He, he did that for this man, and that is a big part of who He is. Now, this, this particular, and by the way, we know just from the miracles that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. All right, and, and we're going to get more into that in just a moment. But this miracle takes place on the Sabbath, so the Jews get upset about it. Uh, the Jews is the name that John uses for the Pharisees here. 
And they, they see the healed man and they say, What are you doing carrying your mat? It's not lawful for you to carry your mat on the Sabbath day. Now, there's absolutely nothing in the Old Testament that says you can't carry your mat on the Sabbath day. But that is something the Pharisees, these legalistic Pharisees, it's just one of the hundreds of rules that they have added in uh, to be a burden to people. And then this, this healed man begins to tell him who, who it was that healed him and told, he said, this man healed me and he told me to take up my mat and to get out of there and to walk around. Now, they don't, he don't know who it is. Uh, they ask him, who was it? And they don't know who it is. Look at verse 14, if you would. Jesus, of course, had conveyed himself away, but now he finds the man in the temple. It says in verse 14, And he says unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. Jesus has now sought out this man. All right, He came by, and he saw this man laying by the pool of Bethesda. He says, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. The man took up his bed and walked, and Jesus conveys himself away for a little bit. The Pharisees come and talk to this man and get on to him in essence. And then he, he gets away from them. And then Jesus now has sought this man out in the temple to tell him a very important thing. To tell him something very, very important. He says, basically, you may have been an invalid for 38 years, but your infirmity would be nothing compared to the penalty for sin. Continuing in sin eventually leads to something worse than any physical ailment. And listen, you might uh, have a physical ailment here, but listen, uh, if, if, if you don't take care of the spiritual ailment that you have, you're going to be a whole lot worse off than you are with your physical ailment because you have a spiritual ailment, and that's going to send you to a place called hell. Jesus told folks, He said, uh, uh, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish, or you will, be, uh, to, uh, you will be headed to eternal destruction. And so what he's basically telling this man is here, that uh, you need to be saved. You need to be saved. And so uh, the man departed, verse number 15, and he told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus, verse 16, and sought to slay Him because He had done these things on the Sabbath day. So now the Jews are mad at this man, and now they are mad at Jesus. And they want to confront Him about the miracle. They do that. And in verse 17, Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Jesus is telling them, He says, listen, I am going to work and I am going to do good deeds on the Sabbath day. I am going to do good deeds on the Sabbath day. God is not subject to the Sabbath rules. And if you think about this, uh, the Bible says that God never slumbers nor sleeps. If God even goes to sleep for a second, you know what's getting ready to happen to the world? It's going into chaos. But He never slumbers nor sleeps. And He's always working. And we can be thankful for that. Uh, how many of you know what gravity is? You know what gravity is? All right, you kids that go to school, y'all know what gravity is? What is gravity? Gravity is like this, okay? I got this little ball here. It's not much of a ball. I'm going to throw this thing up, and it's going to just stay in the air up here. You know that? Did y'all know that? I'm just going to throw this up, and it's just, oh, there it goes. It comes back down. Why did it come back down for? It's called gravity, all right? You jump up in the air, guess what? You don't stay up there. You come back down. Uh, uh, you... Uh, do it is gravity. Listen, if God goes to sleep for even a minute and, 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 and gravity is not maintained, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. But God never suspends His work and we can be thankful for that. Now, do you think the Jews are mad? Do you think the Pharisees are mad? Look at verse 18. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill Him. They wanted Jesus dead. Because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but he also said that God was his Father. Because in verse 17, he says, My Father. 
my father. He doesn't say our father. He doesn't say the father of Israel. He says, my father. And so he was claiming to be the son of God. And it says they sought to kill him more, not only because he'd broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And so I say to you, first of all, when you think about Jesus and who Jesus is and His deity, whether He is God or not, think about the miracles that He performs. Now, I do not believe in faith healers, but I do believe in faith healing. Now, there, there used to be people, I mean, even Paul could heal people, but that's, that's gone, okay, that's gone. Uh, uh, I, I cannot heal anybody. You cannot heal anybody. I can't lay hands on anybody. And because if I could, I would. Okay? And you say, well, I thought there was these faith healers out here. These people do miracles. It's a big scam. And I say to you, why in the world would a faith healer want to go set up a tent somewhere or rent out the civic center somewhere? Why not go to children's hospital? Why not go, go to Memorial Hospital? There's plenty of work for you to do right there. Go to St. Joseph's. Go to Canada. There's plenty of work for you to do right there. Come here today. I mean, you know, there's people in here with diseases and, and situations health-wise that, that need, need a touch. But God, the Son, did that. We saw His miracles. He healed people. Is He, or is he not the Son of God? Well... Secondly, I think we need to think about His words. We need to contemplate His words. Look at verse number 19, where He says, uh, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of Himself but what He seeth the Father do. For what things soever He doeth, uh, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth Him all things that Himself doeth. And He will show Him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom He will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. And so I tell you this morning, you say, well, I, I'm, I'm going to honor God, but I'm not going to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. E Can't do it. You want to honor God? You have to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I want you to see verse 24. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, or listen, listen, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. He says, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. So we see the miracles that Jesus uh, has done, and then we, we contemplate His words. And what, what are His words? His words are words of everlasting life. You know, the Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. You know how a lost person gets saved? They hear the Word of God. And faith is developed in his or her heart. And, and Jesus says, if you will hear my word and you believe on him that sent me, you will have everlasting life and you will not come into condemnation because you have been passed from death unto life. When we hear and believe, we receive everlasting life. And everlasting life starts the minute that you ask him to save you. He says in verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Jesus uh, is, is telling them, hey, there's going to be people I'm going to raise from the dead. Not only could He, not only could He heal a man who had been lame for 38 years, but He could also raise people from the dead. And we know, of course, that He did that. Uh, then, he, then He talks about in verse... Uh, uh, 20, look at verse 28. Uh, uh, um, he says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear His voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And of course, uh, he's referring that to His second coming. There's going to be a voice one day. We're going to hear His voice. And it's going to say what? 
come up hither. And we're going to be coming to be with Him. We're going to hear His voice. Uh, uh, the Bible talks about all the believers, even those who have, are in the graves, are going to hear that voice. And you know what they're going to do? Even the graves are going to pop open. And uh, we which are alive and remain shall be called up together uh, to meet them in the air, to be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. So, we, we think about the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus, of course, uh, gave some very strong words of condemnation to those who would condemn Him and His words because that is taking people to an eternal hell. Do you know there are people right now, there are people right now in so-called churches and so-called other places who are actually not even preaching the Word of God? I, I know Don uh, prayed this morning. He said, listen, uh, bless those that are preaching the Word of God. And that's what we pray for. We pray for other Bible-believing, Bible-preaching churches. But there are some places that are not preaching the Word of God. They'll tell you all sorts of different things, how you can get to heaven. And it's very sad because it's taken a lot of people to hell. A lot of people to hell. Now, I know, uh, you know people do different things, but we, we don't baptize babies around here. You say, why don't you baptize babies? Because it's not in the Bible. You find it, you show it to me, we'll do it. But it's not in the Bible. But a lot, of, a lot of people do that, and I think that gives people false hope for heaven. They say, well, I was, I was baptized as a baby. Well, that, that's, that's not the way God planned it to be. And we get, we get false hope. Listen, uh, uh, look at Jesus' miracles and look at His words. Those are words of everlasting life, not the words of a man. Don't believe it just because I say it. Do not believe it just because this preacher says it. Now, you know very well that I'm going to try to never lead you wrong, but I'm telling you, you don't believe something just because I say it. You believe it because it's in the Word of God. That's what you believe, that it's in the Word of God. That's what we believe, not what some man says. You can believe Jesus' words. And then, I love the last part of this chapter where Jesus gives some witnesses to who He really is. And I, um, I want you to see this. Look at verse 31. There's five different witnesses that Jesus gives in the next few verses, the next 15 or 16 verses or so, to tell really who He is. Number one is, He says in verse 31, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. So first of all, Jesus says, I witness myself. Now, he says that my witness is, is not enough, in essence, but he says, uh, uh, I witness of myself that I am the Son of God. So now, we're, we're in the courtroom. Imagine being in the courtroom. You're the jury here this morning. You're listening to what Jesus is saying here. And he says, I testify of myself that I am the Son of God. Now, you say, why, why does he say, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true? It's because he, there has to be other witnesses. In, in, in Jewish law, there, uh, any, the validity of any claim had to be verified by two or three witnesses. And so what Jesus is saying here, okay, I can witness of myself, and that, that's really enough if, if you'll pay attention to it, but if you want to have some more, hang on, I'll give you some more. I'll give you some more. A second witness. Look at verse 32. Verse 32 and verse 33. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. Now, so the second witness that we have here that Jesus brings into the courtroom in essence today is John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Now, you know that the, the Jewish leaders basically revered John the Baptist as a true prophet of God. And so what Jesus is saying here, you, you, you ask John the Baptist, and, and you go back and you, uh, uh, let's, let's look at the words that John the Baptist has used concerning me, and you will find out that he knew and said that I was the Son of God. John the Baptist said this, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He also said, There's one coming after me whose shoe latchets I am not worthy to unloose. 
And he said, that is the Son of God. And he identified him, of course, as the Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist says, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's the Lamb of God, which has come to take away the sin of the world. Then there's a third witness. A third witness. Go down to verse 36. This is even a greater witness than John the Baptist because he says, I have a greater witness than that of John. Verse 36, For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And so he says, all you got to do is look around and see some of the works that I have done. Now what's he talking about? He's talking about his miracles. And he's probably referring to the latest miracle, the healing of the man born blind. If, if anybody else could do that, why not somebody else help that man? Jesus comes along, the man's been impotent for 38 years, and he is able to get up and walk. So he says there's an even greater witness than that. You know, we got a lot of people in our world that, that likes to be enter, entertained, right? Likes to be entertained. Matter of fact, uh, uh, people go to church to be entertained. And it's kind of sad. But people go to church to be entertained. Uh, if you come here, uh, you're not, there's not a whole lot of entertainment. We're going we're gonna to give you some. Uh, we're going to give you something to eat. And I, I'm talking about sometimes physically, but spiritually, I'm talking about. Somebody said, "Eat? Are we having lunch today here?" No, we are having chili tonight. Yeah, we'll feed you tonight uh, if you want to come back. But but uh, but I'm talking about spiritual food. Now, there's not going to be a whole lot of entertainment. I'm not a real funny guy. You know, I, 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 I'm not a real, uh, and we don't, we don't have a, a big entertainment crew up here to entertain you and all that kind of stuff. But you get in the Word of God. But some people come to be entertained. Uh, people like entertainment. It just amuses them. Uh, amuse means to think. Uh, added to it means not to think. Uh, uh, so a lot of people like to be amused. A lot of people like to be entertained. Uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus didn't come to entertain people. We, don't, we are not here uh, to entertain people. But a lot of people came to Jesus just to watch the show. Because they said, boy, we hang by Him. He might heal somebody today. And man, that is, that is good to watch. Or uh, uh, we're going to find out in John chapter 6 next week that Jesus feeds the 5,000. And then he sends the disciples over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee that night. And you know what? The next day, those people are looking for Jesus again. You know why they're looking for Jesus again? Because of the miracle which he did, because he fed them. And, and they said, well, maybe we'll get to see another miracle, or maybe he'll, get to, he'll feed us again. Maybe he'll feed us every day if we hang around here with him. And we won't have to even worry about it. People are interested in a show. They want to be entertained. And, and listen, that's, that's very sad because we don't need to be entertained. We don't come for a show. We come for the truth. Uh, we come to hear the Word of God. And, uh, you know, there's, there's times that uh, uh, it's, it's rare, but, you know, there's times that we may have a little skit or we may do a little drama or something like that, but that does not take the place of the Word of God and the preaching of the Word of God. And, and we're going to continue to have that. And so he says, listen, I have a greater witness. The, the miracles that I do are even a greater witness. And then he says in verse 37, here's the fourth witness. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him, ye believe not. Now he says, the Father has even made statement that I am His Son. Now, where did that happen? Well, we know where it happened already. It happens another time later on. But it's already happened at His baptism. When Jesus come out, out of the water, what, is, what does the Bible say? Uh, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, we know God the Father talks, says the same thing, basically, at the transfiguration. Later on. And then Jesus calls His fifth witness to the stand. In verse number 39. He says, Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of Me, 
are they are they which witness of me. Search the Scriptures. Then verse 40, And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Now, he says, search the Scriptures. What Scriptures did they have back then? They had the Old Testament. They had the law, what they call the law and the prophets. That's what they called it. The law and the prophets. Jesus said you had the law and the prophets. And I tell you right now, if you study the Old Testament, all you got to realize is that the law and the prophets foretold the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Foretold the coming of the Messiah. And uh, uh, the Old Testament talks about that. So he says, search the Scriptures. He says, you will find me there. And today, he says, search the Scriptures. Again, you don't believe it just because I say it. You search the Scriptures. You find out what the Scriptures have to say. And, you, you, and when you uh, read through the Scriptures, you will find the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, and you say, well, I, I'm not going to do anything about it today, okay, I'll tell you what to do. Go home and start reading the Gospel of John. And you will see over and over and over that Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God. Truly the Son of God. I, I, I've told you this story before, but I had a friend in high school that uh, his testimony was he was an atheist, uh, he, he did not care for God, and he was going to write a paper, he was going to write a paper on why the resurrection of Jesus Christ was not true. He was going to write a paper. You know what happened to him when he got finished doing all his research and all his studying? He came to know Christ as his Savior. He said, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. I was going to prove that it wasn't true. Now I'm going to tell you that it was true. You search the Scriptures. Search the Scriptures. And uh, Jesus fulfilled all of the prophecies about the Messiah. You know, Moses never suggested that you keep the law and then you, you get saved. No, nope, that's not the truth. You have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ to get saved. Look at verse 45. He says, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. And Moses even wrote about the Lord, talking about there was going to be that prophet that God was going to uh, uh, put his words in his mouth and he was going to come. Verse 46, look at it. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. And then verse 47, For if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So here we go. The witnesses have testified about Jesus Christ. Who is he? Who is he today? I'll tell you who he is. He's the Son of God. He's the Son of God. The witnesses have testified. We've seen His miracles. We've heard His words. We've evaluated the witnesses. And we know who He truly is today, the Son of God. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ today as your Savior, you can be saved today.